Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Fumble Live. We have a lot of fun news to get into today, including how Tom Brady got absolutely wasted. LeBron James reacted to all of that. Plus, we're getting into Giannis and how some NBA scouts have their doubts about him. Before we dive into this news, make sure you subscribe to our channel, tap the bell for notifications, give this video a thumbs up, and leave a comment below. Here's the Fumble Squad. I'm Devin Howard. You can find me on Instagram as at Devin Howard. Hey guys, I'm Jackie Ray. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at jraythefanatic. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Brent. You guys can follow me on all social media at I am Bronson. We are one day away from Fan or Foe Fridays, which is becoming a quick favorite of mine and I know you guys love as well. Make sure you guys get in those comments today and we will be screenshotting some of them to then talk about on Friday during Fan or Foe Friday. So make sure you give us some witty stuff, whatever you think. You can be trolls if you want to be trolls. Um, of course, if you're a troll, you're not going to be a Fumble fan favorite for the week, but we'll still talk about, about it anyway. Um, but make sure you head to the comments because we will be screening a bunch today for tomorrow's show. And then uh, one other update for you guys, due to some technical issues that we're having, our show is actually going to be going up at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time tomorrow and Tuesday. So we're not gonna be going live at our usual 11 a.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time slot. So make sure you tune in at 1 p.m. And uh, then starting next Wednesday, we'll be back to our normal hours. So we can't wait to see you guys then. But for now, 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Mark it on your calendars. Don't miss out. And now let's dive into Tom Brady and his drunken shenanigans. So um, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers decided to put on this big boat rager. Everybody was getting super wild. Things were getting crazy. Tom Brady, the guy who won't even eat tomatoes because they're too inflammatory, had obviously had at least three drinks. I have a feeling Tom Brady is a lot like me. It takes me two drinks to feel like I'm lightweight, completely <laughs> lost. Yeah. I feel like Tom Brady is the exact same way because the guy was acting wild and I just don't think he's pounding, you know, 13 beers or something. But um, he decided that it would be a good idea to play catch with the trophy that they got. So let me show you guys that clip right here. He's so nervous. It makes me Ridiculous. so nervous. There's an, another angle too. So can we play that next clip as well? Oh, 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 God. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hey, guys, hey, guys. I look at the oh, women that are the voice of the region. They're like, wait, hold on, wait, wait. And the men are like, no, 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 we got it. Oh my gosh, if the Lombardi went into the freaking bay, could you imagine? <laughs> could you imagine? Oh my god, I know. And so my hands were about to touch it, so I was like, oh my gosh, they're gonna bat it out of the way and it's gonna oh I know. <laughs> so stressful and I know these guys are used to catching footballs and like this is probably nothing for them but this is just a risk that I would not want to take so things were definitely getting pretty reckless um, and then the celebrations obviously continued throughout the afternoon and Tom Brady got so sloshed that he couldn't even walk off of the boat without being held up so play that clip right now too. Tom, how awesome was that? Tom Brady, Had me dying. I thought this was so funny. It reminded me of two bros walking to the frat house rager, the backwards hat, right. the neon shirts. Like, where's your thirty pack of beer? Right. Like, the, this reminded me of Vegas out. when you're leaving the pool, when you're leaving the day parties, like with your friends, and somebody's always being held like this. Like, bye guys, bye. It's talking <laughs> to people you don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> I know it was so funny and it's so weird because that's just not even like that's not the Tom Brady that we're used to um but obviously the athletes all had a grand old time they were really partying hard um and it left LeBron feeling a little bit salty so obviously the Lakers didn't get to have their finals uh win parade which was disappointing i think i can speak for all lakers fans right jackie when i say we were bummed about that um being 
it's it was sad it sucks um being in the middle of a pandemic obviously in la county there are very strict regulations to keep people safe from uh coronavirus so we didn't get to have anything like this the lakers did go to vegas to celebrate but it was just like the athletes themselves um so lebron actually did man oh man i wish we were able to have our parade because i would have been walking beautifully just like you so um he's obviously feeling a little bit bummed about that but i guess um that's the difference between california and florida we can't have the lakers parade but the buccaneers can throw a massive boat rager Britt, i want to go to you first do you think it sends the wrong message for the buccaneers to be partying like this in the middle of a pandemic Yes, because obviously not just the Lakers, the Dodgers as well. LA had two national championships this year, this last year. You know, we had the Dodgers who didn't have it won one since 1988. So that was huge for them, you know, and to have, I mean, the Lakers, which is fine because the Lakers have been known. I mean, they're tied right now with the Celtics for the most NBA championships of all time. So it's like, okay, Lakers could sit this one out, but like, like for the Dodgers, I haven't had one since 1988. Like, we wanted to party too. We wanted to have fun too, but it's a pandemic. So to see the players do this, not I didn't see not one mask in sight. Yes, everybody was on their boats with their buddies or whatever, but there were tons of fans that were like around the border of where the bay is, just screaming and cheering them on and all this kind of stuff. Nobody had masks on. Like, it just... It was very poor taste, poor form for me. I just, I didn't like it. Um, and I'm like surprised that like, I don't know. I just felt like Tom Brady as like supposed to be like this like leader and health, healthy guy and whatever. I'm surprised that he would even like be like, oh yeah, let's go do this like party boat thing. People, you saw people like jumping from boat to boat at some times too. Like some of the players were literally like, hey, I'm going to jump over to your boat now. And like, they were all like, doing the most with all, and I'm sure all the people that were on their boat did not get like COVID tests before they got on the boat. It was just kind of weird. Obviously it's, I'm a little salty too, because I wish I could have celebrated with my Dodgers, you know, and we had to postpone that. Not like it's, I still think that obviously the Dodgers and Lakers deserve a celebration when the time is right, but we're still in very deeply in the middle of COVID. So I just thought it was kind of poor form for the Bucks to do it. The Bucks didn't waste no time either. They did it the typical couple days after. They did the Disneyland thing right after and then they went straight to their parade after like there was no such thing as COVID. So it, it was kind of weird to see, but the Tom Brady, Tampa Tom, like I just like him more and more every single day. Like this was, and then his tweet, like Dave, if we can get the tweet back up that you just showed, because reading the Tom Brady tweet, the LeBron tweet that's connected to it, that was the best thing ever because it literally said the nut instead of nothing, noting to see here, just lit with a capital T on little avocado tequila. First of all, guys, what the hell is avocado tequila? <laughs> I have to know this. Is this Tom Brady's new organic avocado tequila that he's going to be selling, like Tequila Tom? Like, I'm here for this. We should start a Tasty Tom Thursdays and cheers to Tom Brady every Thursday because this was everything. It needs to be, I think it needs to be combi combined maybe with um, LeBron's Taco Tuesday. We add Tequila Tom. Like, let's add it and have it be a whole day thing. I love it. I, love it. I like mm -hmm. that idea too. I like that. So I think with the avocado tequila thing, he was making a joke because he says that he likes to cheat on his like super intense um, anti-inflammatory diet by having avocado ice cream, which like I love avocado, so I would not be mad at avocado ice cream, but I think it was a joke. Unless he is coming out with an avocado tequila, and if he is, I am so yeah, it's buy that. It's a drunk incredible. joke. Yeah. Well, I it was just friend. classic. Yeah. I mean, all the misspelling and everything was great. Yeah. Yeah, I have a friend who calls her, her guacamole avocado tequila because she puts tequila in the guacamole. It's not, it doesn't taste the best when you're sober, but after you start drinking, it is so good. It is so mm. good. <laughs> doesn't sound like my vibe at all. <laughs> you have to um, drink first. If you taste it sober, you're going to be like, something's wrong with her. She's smoking. But if you taste it after maybe two or three drinks, you're going to be like, you 
were on to something, girl. You're you have good to- or you're just drunk and you don't care anymore. <laughs> yeah. Drunk and scared, but yes, I've told you what you need to do to, to enjoy it. So. Right. <laughs> okay. Well, before we move on into our need to know news story, Jackie, I have to hear from you. What do you think about LeBron's reaction? Did you sense a little bit of saltiness there? Or do you think that fans are reading into it too much? Um. I, he's the same amount of salty that I was because when I saw this, I was like, damn, I should be a Bucks fan for a day and just take my behind down to Florida and get my party in because I am really tired. And I don't understand how we're the epicenter in New York and L.A. And we just don't have gatherings like this. People ain't out here doing this in L.A. So how are we still have all these cases? It's crazy to me. But no, I'm with LeBron on that because I'm salty. I want to be out there. I want to be partying. I wanted to go downtown when the Lakers won, but I didn't because I knew a lot of people were, mm-hmm. weren't going to be wearing masks. And there was a part of me that was like very proud of myself for not doing it and being responsible. And then when we covered it the next day and I saw all those people out there, there was a part of me that was salty, like, damn, I should have just went. So no, I totally get both sides of it. On one side, you're trying to be this responsible human being, but on the other side, you're like, I'm over it. I just want to celebrate. So no, I didn't, right. I didn't take anything from what LeBron said, I love seeing Tom Brady like this and trust and believe if LA was open, y'all would be up here chastising me because I'd be out there, no mask, diving in the water if the Lombardi trophy had fallen in, I'd get it out. Like I'd be turned up out there. (laughs) You guys, I just (laughs) noticed something about, I think we are Bucks fans today because you can't really tell, but my shirt is actually brown and you guys have red Mm, on. We are Bucks fans today without even realizing it. <laughs> My God. I never desire. thought I'd see the day. That's what it is. It's our desire wow. to party is coming out. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. Okay, you guys, let's jump into this news about Giannis. So Giannis's shot has been called into question many times, and things actually seem to be getting worse for him. So he's shooting 27.6% from beyond the arc on one attempts per game, and he's also shooting just over 63% from the free throw line on 10.2 attempts per game. But scouts question whether the, the Bucks have it in them to get a bucket in crunch time, especially if the opposing team is going to pack the paint and put Giannis on the line. Um, a scout said that Giannis is just clearly not the go-to guy in the clutch. He doesn't have uh, faith that Chris Middleton is either. Um, so there's a lot of question about Giannis and his ability to really pull through in those final moments of a game. And then Devin Booker also threw a little bit of shade at Giannis um, so he, when asked about Giannis pulling up for mid range for mid range area for a potential game winning shot, D book says he thought, quote, we're in good shape. Those were his words. Um, Giannis took a 20 foot shot that failed to go into the basket and Devin just wasn't even worried about it at all. Um, when Giannis did make that attempt, Giannis walked away from that game with 47 points. So it was still a good game for him, but, um, I guess people are starting to wonder if this is going to be his kind of, or if this is his Achilles heel, Jackie, do you think that this could be Giannis's downfall or do people need to stop worrying about him being a clutch player and focus on everything else that he does? I love that I've been with a fumble long enough that I can legitimately say, check the tapes. Cause I literally said this when he won MVP and I said, the league has changed so much now that, okay, yeah, I'm not, but I think if you can score 47 points, I don't care how you score 47 points. I don't care if you're, and it, when you're Giannis' size, I do believe your zip code should be in the paint. That's where you should live. That's where you should want to live. But I said then he doesn't have a real shot. And the way that the NBA is kind of structured now, you don't have to have a fantastic shot, but you have to have a shot. You have to be good enough and you have to be, since you are the star on your team, you have to be the person that they can go to to take that shot in clutch moments. And Giannis is not that. I have said that for since he was nominated for that first MVP. And, I'm, and I can stand by that now. So this isn't anything new, but... You don't score 47 points just all willy nilly. That's not an easy thing to do, especially if your main shot is in the paint, because people will know eventually that you're going to go into the paint. So if you can still, you know, them knowing that and you can still go in the paint and dominate in the paint, then I'm all for it. I don't think the the outside shot is absolutely great, but that's for me. But I know that the way the game has evolved, that the three point shot is crucial because that's what I would do. You know, if I'm playing, um, Milwaukee, the, I'm going to stack the paint because I know that's where 
Giannis lives, and I'm going to force him to take that outside shot. And then I'm just going to, you know, D up and get the rebound. So you do have to have such a game that you are a threat, whether you're in the paint or outside of the paint. And Giannis doesn't have that yet. And when you have a superstar like caliber, you have to be, you have to be a weapon in and out of the paint. And so I think that these, this criticism getting is absolutely correct. But I was giving him this criticism long before today. So y'all need to pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> and then Britt, um, are you with Jackie or do you feel like uh, Devin Booker is getting a little too cocky? Was this disrespectful or totally warranted? Devin Booker has been cocky ever since he got his little first little nod for All-Star last year. And um, I, I, I like... I love Giannis. Y'all know I love me some Giannis. And I love how Giannis plays defense. And I'm a defensive girl. I love my, like, defense guys. And I don't think necessarily, like, I the same setup that Jack talking about literally can give Giannis opportunities to have a ton of and ones as well. Because if the defender is not doing what they got to do properly and he's, you know, charging the basket in that moment, he can get an and one. So that what does that turn into? a three-point play. So I feel like it, Giannis does what he does, and I think he does what he does well. Obviously, it's not something that we love to see in the league right now because everybody is all about that three-point shot, but I don't think that it matters. They're still second in the Eastern Conference, and some of the most clutch players that I remember, which number one being Robert Ori, is not a, a star player, you know? like, And I think that that's the point of being like, this clutch guy. I don't think LeBron is considered a clutch player. People talk bad about LeBron as, as far as being clutch all the time, but does he still not win a bunch of games? And is he still not the most important guy on the, on the court, you know? So like, I don't think a player necessarily has to be this clutch guy because we're, we all know if Michael Jordan is getting the ball at the end, or Michael Jordan's going to get the ball with the last shot of the game, to win the game. So they're going to double team Michael Jordan, you know, like you don't want to necessarily be the guy that everybody's like double covering at the end because you're taking this shot. Giannis is a four, you know, like I feel like give it to your shooting guard, give it to your point guard. Like why does it, why would you always have to go with Giannis? Like give it to the guy that like people don't assume, which is why to me they're clutch because people don't assume that they're going to take that final shot. They take it and you guys win the game. So like, I don't think necessarily a clutch player and a star player are the same conversation. I don't think they're the same player. I don't, I actually prefer them not to be the same player because people are always going to look at and double team the star player in those situations. So a lot of times you don't want to give the ball to that person. You want to give it to somebody else who's a solid shooter, give it to JJ Redick, who is one of the best or better three point shooters. He leads, he's led the league several times in three points and we never talk about him because he's not a star player. But he is a great three-point shooter, so he's going to come in clutch in those moments that you need him. When for my Clippers, he came in clutch multiple games, you know, and he's doing the same thing still. So um, I think a lot of times those clutch guys are guys that kind of go under the radar and not guys that you expect to be that guy. So I don't need Giannis to be this clutch player. I need him to play his game, play defense, and score points regardless of how you're going to do it. So for those of you who are tuning in, um, let us know in the comments what you guys think. Does Giannis need to be a clutch player in order to kind of solidify his legacy? Or is he fine doing what he does and letting somebody else take the reins when it comes to that? Uh, but for now, let's wrap up Need to Know News. Jackie, can you take us into the post-up? Yes, I'm ready. Let's get into the post-up. Quick fun fact, though, LeBron has more clutch points than Michael Jordan. I just had to throw that out there. I know y'all don't like to say that because you're haters, but oh, I had to throw Jackie, that out there. Really continue on. Jackie with on Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> had to say it. Y'all know I had to. LeBron's right here. I did say, to say Michael it, Jordan was always double teamed, so they didn't go yes. to him that much on those those clutch shots. As was just LeBron several times. I'm just pointing it out. Like, if we're going to look at the numbers, numbers right but let's move on to this post up you guys know me well enough to know i would never pick something like this to watch in front of you guys so you can thank Britt johnson for this one because it is absolutely grotesque mm -hmm. but let me set the stage on tuesday uh, the orange orange men's basketball team was facing the nc state wolf pack here's the thing 
If you are a coach on the sideline, I need you to remember one thing. At any moment, the camera can come to you. You should expect it. You should be prepared for it. And above all, do not do this. Take a look at this. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Who, who See, does that? That is, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. <laughs> You're grown up. <laughs> Even as a little kid, when little kids would do this, I hated this. I was there's never a point in my life where I was like, this is like a never. good idea. How are you how are you this old? Oh my god. Like he's doing it in a way that you know he does it all the time because he's got a whole motion. It's almost like one motion. So gross. <laughs> but of Twitter reacted to this, um, and the, I got to get to Brit at the end, but this one, pr first person says, this is a good source of protein and carbs. I hate you. I don't like you. Please don't ever have children <laughs> because you're going to teach them. And I don't like it. Let's go to this next one. And this next one says that you're wrong, Devin. All the people in here acting like they ain't chomped on a booger. I have not, <laughs> sir. <laughs> this, is so, this is so gross. This, this next one was like, his hands look creepily young. Does he use Jergens? That's just going to give us a, a chance to watch it again. <laughs> I want to see if his hands look really, really young. Dave, if you could throw that up there one more time so we can just check out his hands and his one. His hands yeah, do look oddly do. young. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. Oh my Does God. he use Jergens? <laughs> what? What, well, cocoa butter? Brit? <laughs> what? Why? Why, Britt? Why, why, why did you even come across? This is, this is awful. Because <laughs> you guys know, first of all, y'all know I love my NCAA basketball. We are closely approaching a potential March Madness. I'm getting excited. And so I'm literally watching the game and I saw this moment. I was like, this is golden. This is so funny. It's, it's hilarious. Like it, it's, Oh, I just loved every piece of it. It was just so funny. But like, coach, come on. This is why you you can just keep the boogers in your nose because you're supposed to have a mask covering your nose anyway. So nobody should have seen your boogers. So because you're not wearing your mask properly, not in your nose or your mouth, we had this exchange happen. At least the mouth should be covered. Then it went your mouth. You could have just, you know, rubbed it onto your mask. But this is why we tell you guys to wear your mask properly so you don't do anything like this on national TV. <laughs> I don't know. I don't like any of that. I don't like the thought of him safe boogers. I don't like the thought of his boogers being on his mask. We're just going to move on and have a booger <laughs> for the rest of the day. Booger gate. So booger gate. Oh, God. No. <laughs> I'm good. That's going to be in the back of my mind the rest of the show. I just want you guys to know that. But uh, we're going to move on to this. Yes. Thank you, Britt Johnson. <laughs> so this next one, I got to say that I am I'm really thankful this happened. I know a lot of people were upset or felt that James Harden was trying to force his way into Brooklyn. Maybe. But the truth of the matter is, is we think that this might have saved Karis Levert's life. Um, he has talked about that because you know, he had that growth on his kidney that they found because of the physical he took because of the trade. Um, the Pacers did this whole montage towards him. Com com remember that he hasn't even played one game for them yet, but they did this whole production, showed you know where he's come from, from the day he was drafted till now, just to show that they wanted to appreciate him. But I, I love that, and I love this moment where you know the, the Nets are actually out there with him too and just showing him all kinds of love, specifically the love he's getting from Kyrie. Just kind of warmed my heart a little bit. Take a look. Just checking on him. Levert, of course, had surgery to remove a small mass on his kidney, and the indicator is that everything is A-OK. -okay. Now it's just a matter of him getting back to a point where he can return to the NBA. He has been shooting and moving around a little bit, and a good sign that he's just on this trip. Absolutely. Great to see him. Great to see him smiling. You know how much love you have for Karis, and sometimes... I just, you can really tell how deep that Kyrie feels some things because Karis was like, okay, I'm okay. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> like, he had to get him off of him. Like, you can go now. Okay. He's just like, you're, you're okay. He's like, you're okay. Oh, yeah, I, I, you don't got your mask on. <laughs> right. He's like, all right, well, I'm just going to my head in your chest. Then. You know, Kyrie is like, my guy. I, I love Kyrie so 
show so much. I love the emotion that he has. It's great. And I, I love to see that moment. I love to see him out there and feeling okay and the tribute that the Pacers did to him, even though he's not playing for them yet. I thought the love that was in that room was amazing, and I am here for all of it. But now from love to stupidity that has to be a normal transition now because the NBA has not walked it back. They are still planning the all-star game. And now I think they're making every player's eyes roll with this one because the league and the union have been working, you know, through the details of a scaled down event. So what does that look like? It means that the players are going to basically just be in and out of Atlanta. Um, the significantly shorter window of time that um, typically they can be there as far as like get togethers, parties and, media meet and greet, all of that has been X'd out. And the players are expected to arrive in private planes on Saturday. They have to stay in private rooms in the hotel, free from crowds. And then they have to leave immediately after the game on Sunday night, which is funny to me because the NBA is trying to say that this is for the fans. The fans really want this. <laughs> but the fans are being excluded from everything. So it does not sound fun to me. Um, on top of that, the league is pressing on a plan to incorporate the slam dunk competition into the halftime. So I think we have a tweet about that, that they're trying to make that part of the halftime show, which we're kind of used to the halftime show being like some artist or th something like that. But Adrian Woj says um, ESPN in reshaped events, NBA is progressing on a plan to incorporate the slam dunk co competition into halftime. I don't even know what that looks like. Um, people are not happy about it, specifically people from Atlanta. I saw this first tweet that says, I love how they are picking cities that are completely wide open. They know this is going to drive people to come to Atlanta that weekend, spend money in the city, hotels, et cetera, further impacting the spread of COVID. And I think that that's, that's obvious. You know, one person took a weird shot at Dwayne Wade um, on this next tweet that I don't really understand, but okay. He says, so what we're going to do is take the idea of an all-star weekend during a pandemic and then squeeze it all into one jam-packed game so we can make sure more people can be in contact sooner. This is because we owe it to Dwayne Wade to throw a bunch of tens up in the air. So Dwayne Wade, you still have not lived that down. <laughs> So just so you know, they're blaming this whole ridiculousness on you. And Brett, I think you're going to love this last comment as well, because I think you'll agree. Ain't nobody um, want to watch Aaron Gordon do the same three dunks and cry about not winning again. <laughs> I know Brett, he's not doing it, but I knew I knew he was going to have a comment about that last one. So what are your thoughts on that last one? <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, first of all, slam dunk is, you know, the best part of the All-Star game to me. I love it. Aaron Gordon said he wasn't going to be participating in that and he was going to switch up and do the three-point challenge instead. But it looks like they're not going to have the three-point challenge or the skills challenge or the, the celebrity game or like whatever. Everything that makes All-Star weekend fun. So what is, like, like I said a million times, what is the actual point? I thought the thing that you should do is maybe the other things because it requires less athletes being involved and then just cancel out the game and just donate the money. But now it's like, oh, it's the game. Plus maybe a halftime of an, a slam dunk contest. Like the slam dunk contest mm -hmm. cannot go into that 20, 30 minutes of halftime. It just can't. It's not. And then, so then none of the all-star players are going to participate for sure, for sure. Usually you never really see the all-stars doing it anyway, but now it automatically takes them out even being able to participate in the slam dunk contest. So I don't know. I don't like any part of this, whatever. I mean, yes, I'm going to still watch it. Yes, it's annoying that it's like in Atlanta. And if you still to this moment right now, if you go to the NBA website for the 2020 or 2021 NBA All-Star Game, it says it's postponed. It says it's not happening right now. So they don't even know what they're doing. It's like plans for a revised NBA All-Star Game will be announced later in the year. But they're like post, it still says it's postponed. And I get all the cities are pre-decided ahead of time. Um, but Atlanta is just not it. Tampa was not it. It's just like, and I know people that are going to spend five to $8,000 for a ticket to go to this all-star game in Atlanta. And they're going to party all weekend, regardless of the players, just like they did with Super Bowl. Everybody partied. All, I saw so many videos of people partying and going to Tampa for the Super Bowl that didn't, it doesn't matter. The players don't, it doesn't matter if the players are going to be there to participate or not. Like they just want to go for like the all-star weekend. And because Atlanta's open, 
that person that tweeted that is right. There, people are going to go and fly there for All Star Weekend, and Atlanta is going to have a bunch of turn up parties for All Star. And like, uh, the the NBA doesn't even understand what they're doing. Have All Star Weekend here in LA, because then at least there's no clubs, no parties that can happen, and it really can just be about game if you want to do it like that. I don't know. Right. None of this makes sense. Um, and I, I get it. I, I know that they are doing this money grab, but I just think that it's too risky. It doesn't make an ounce of sense. Um, this next one doesn't make an ounce of sense either because yesterday I told you about my business hero, Mark Cuban. He had said that he wasn't going to play the national anthem. Hadn't been playing team games, but now since it's about to be, you know, fans in the stands, a reporter wrote about it, and now it's this big to do. And the NBA is like, no, you will play the national anthem, which is funny to me, and I definitely respect what Mark uh, Cuban had to say about it. He said he wanted to not play it because there's a lot of people who feel like their lives and their voices are not represented in that song. I think that's a dope perspective to have. Um, but the Dallas hockey team, to even though the NBA said, hey, you have to play this song, they decided to take a jab at Mark Cuban and the Mavericks for playing this, and they decided to write this anthem, and they said, we have issued the following statement regarding the national anthem. The playing of the national anthem is a time-honored tradition, and the Dallas Stars will continue to perform the Star Spangled Banner prior to our games at American Airlines Center. As the only national hockey team in Texas, we are proud to represent our state and our country. That is just oozing with entitlement to me, so it, it was completely unnecessary. But this is hockey, so the hockey did ab the bare minimum. It, we should just call it zero when it comes to trying to say anything about social change. So I fully expected their fans to be like, yeah, you know, patriotic, blah, blah, blah. Nope, this was the all time backfire. Um, this first user basically said, you know, you don't even have a lot of Americans. He says, you have like five people from the US on your team. If you want to play the anthem, try O Canada or our land. I'm like, yeah, that's true. And if you go down, there's only, I only saw three American flags, but maybe there's two people that weren't listed on their roster. But I only saw three Americans that are actually on their team. The rest are definitely from Canada. The majority are from Canada. Um, another user said the same thing, basically, that the statement was smug. I think it was dripping with just kind of an elitist mentality. Um, but this one says, this statement is dripping with smug, self-righteous nationalism disguised as patriotism. A translation, we're so much more patriotic than the Mavs. Look how very American we are compared to them, even with only five American players. That's a factual statement. And then this next one just had so much sarcasm. I was totally here for it. It says, oh, good. How else will you know? Will we know you love America unless we play the We Love America song? After all, I thought this was America. When one American team plays another American team, America needs to show support to America. <laughs> so good because it makes it so abundant. This whole thing is. I love that these hockey fans are like, no, you're not going to get away with this shade. I yes. love this backfire. So shout out to these hockey fans. They did it. I was surprised. I love to be surprised. This next one surprises me, but it also hurts me to my core because I told you guys I spent a lot of time watching MMA. This is years in the making. I've, I've been watching MMA since it was like really not that good. Um, and I, the women were horrible for a long time. So this one, I uh, let me just tell you about it. So like I said, I've been watching it for a long time. One of the first female fighters, at least, that I got to see was uh, Gina Carano. You guys probably know her from The Mandalorian. If, if you're watching that, she's badass in that show. She's killing it. And the reason that I loved her was because she didn't really fit at that time. And even now, if we're being honest, she didn't really fit the the look of a lot of the females had. She was she was a little bit more dainty than she is now. She was definitely ripped, but she was just good looking. She was a striking looking female. She was feminine. She was hot. She she was Ronda Rousey before Ronda Rousey came along. I saw I saw her when she got beat by Cyborg. I saw her when she beat um, Letitia Best Bestova. I've, I've been there with this girl. And so when she got on The Mandalorian, I was like, oh, my girl's on The Mandalorian. She has now been fired for the worst reason possible. She posted something to her IG story that people are saying it basically shows that she's racist and that she's a Nazi supporter. Um, let me just show you the tweet that she, or the this thing that she posted on her story. This is her her um, 
post. And it's long, but basically she's saying that it wasn't the Nazis who kind of beat up the Jews or ran them out. It was their neighbors because they knew the Nazis were coming. So they beat them up and they ran them out to, to basically help them get rounded up by the Nazis. And she's saying it's the same thing now for basically Republicans. People are saying, you know, like, let's round them up. So she literally is comparing what the Jews went through in the Holocaust to Republicans now. This is horribly phrased. I think what she's saying is, hey, maybe we shouldn't persecute people for their religious beliefs. I think that's what she was saying, horribly stated, but this one, and I went back to 2015. I've never seen her say anything that strikes me as racist, that strikes me as like she's a Nazi supporter, none of that. But apparently people are saying she's been like this for a while. Um, let me go to some of these responses to her tweet. Um, Cause I, I just, I just am hurt by this. Um, she didn't get a lot of support. So this one says, this was the first person. He said, did she compare the Holocaust, Holocaust to being a Republican? And then he, this is the person who started this hashtag, hashtag fire, fire Gina Carano. It caught on because there's so many fire Gina Carano that it's, it's ridiculous. And then this, this other user, I have one user that, or two more. This is kind of what I thought. I thought she stated it badly. But I thought she was just basically kind of saying, y'all can't just be out here trying to do whatever to Republicans. And this user says the same thing. She's speaking her mind. She asked free speech to express herself. Um, uh, she isn't breaking any laws. The outrage to call for her job does not fit the action of saying how she feels. You see, she's, you see she has some outlandish belief, but let her be heard. Don't fire Gina. I agree with that one. Um, this next user was like, no, <laughs> fire her. He goes, exactly. She, had, she said what she said and she had the right to. Everybody calling her rotten had a right to, and Disney was well within their rights to can her. I just hate it took this long for folks to see Gina, what Gina was all about. That must be me because I ain't seen Gina in this light before. This one hurts me to my core. Um, Devin, I'm going to come to you. Basically, I, I first of all, I got to acknowledge she was completely wrong to even compare being a basic Republican to the Holocaust. I think we can all recognize that. But was this statement so bad that we can call her a racist, a Nazi, and call for her job at the same time? I mean, I don't know that you can necessarily determine that she's anti-Semitic or a Nazi supporter or a sympathizer um, based on those tweets, but I do think what we can say, what we can say is that she's wildly misinformed, and it's all it, it does is damage Jewish people and the history that we have. My own great-grandparents were killed in the Holocaust, so for somebody to go out there and deny that it really happened in the way that it did or to reduce it to something, you know, as just people discriminating against Jews because they're Jewish, you know, it's neighbors and not this whole political movement and this whole political force that happened, um, I think is just dangerous. And it's just, it's misinformation and it's wrong. Um, yes, people have free speech, but I think that, you know, I think that getting rid of her, hiring her was exactly what should have happened because it's just dangerous rhetoric. And, you know, we'd be saying the same thing if she came and said some super like, you know, anti-Asian things or um, anything right. that would is discriminating against the black community. I think that we need to hold people accountable for the damaging things that they say. And I support this 100%. Yeah, I think it's just, I, she's somebody that I've looked up to for so long. And to be honest, I'm not a Star Wars fan. And the only reason I started watching The Mandalorian is because she was going to be on it. Um, so this one definitely hurt me because I you don't want to see people that you really, you know, look up to in a negative light. So, but I'm going to follow your lead if it, you know, because it definitely was, it was one of those things I was like, what the hell is she talking about? But again, like you said, if it had been anybody else, if it had been the black community, I'm sure the outrage would have been even more, but Gina, girl, and she hasn't issued a statement. She hasn't issued an apology. She hasn't said, I didn't mean it like that. She hasn't said anything. So that that's definitely a hash mark in the, okay, she really meant what she said kind of column. And one thing that ahead, I do want to add is that there are a lot of people that deny the Holocaust even happened or that it happened that it did. But I knew that six million Jews were killed, and it was not long ago, you know, it was, was wasn't that long ago that this happened, and six million lives were lost. So, I feel yeah. it's frustrating for me when people try and come out and say like it wasn't that bad, it didn't happen like that. Like, no, 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 this is how it happened. It happened to my great aunt, who is literally still alive today. She lost her entire family to 
because of the Holocaust. So it just, it's mind blowing and really, really frustrating for me when people say this kind of stupid shit. Right. Well, in that case, I guess it's good that she got fired um, because it's, you're right. You're, what you say has consequences and it should have consequences and it should have long-term consequences because you can't just be out here saying whatever, especially when there's an ounce of hate involved in that. So Mandalorian fan who's going to take her place because her character is a very dominant character on that show but season's over so they got time to replace her for sure um but let's get into this next one because Shaq is still out here being very Shaq which is annoying and so now that the the jazz are on this whole win streak he's saying that you know what i did that take a look at this uh, it looks really good and some would say that you I'm can't happy. hate because of why why, why can't I hate? Yeah, why can't oh, you? I, I never hate. I just try because to Because you're... Set it up for the t-shirt. I just try to... We're trying uh, to sell merch here. We're trying to sell merch. I just try to give constructive criticism. And my whole career, I've been a leader, and I motivate my play a certain way. So, you're welcome, Utah. Well, I was trying to motivate you. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> Is he for real right now? I can't even... Uh, I'm not even going to give him that much time. I can't stand that man. Is all I'm going to leave with that one. Um, but this next one doesn't make an ounce of sense to me either. I started to put it on yesterday's um, post up, but I was like, nah, because I just didn't think, I thought maybe Carl Anthony Towns wouldn't play. Um, but just in case you did, you missed it. Um, Shams had posted this tweet that said, you know, hey, Carl uh, Anthony Towns is out there recovering. He, after recovering from COVID and missing past 13 games, Minnesota Timberwolves star Carl Anthony Towns um, is expected to return versus the Clippers, sources tell. So I was like, okay, cool. I saw this. I think we all, a lot of us saw it. And we were like, okay, cool. But then Carl Anthony Towns was like, nah, bruh, I'm not about to play. And he said, this is news to me. Last time I checked, I was going to shoot around and to see how I feel. Underlying conditions and COVID don't mix. So then I saw this and I was like, oh, damn, he's not, he's not better yet. Okay, that sucks. Well, then he plays. And so then when I see him playing, I'm like, well, hold up. Why did you come for Shams like this? This is ridiculous. So now I go back to Shams' page because I'm like, he's definitely going to say something shady. Shams is like, no, I ain't got time. He says, Carl Anthony Towns is officially back in the Timberwolves lineup tonight. That's all he said. And I'm like, bruh, why did you even, what was the purpose of that tweet? But Shams is like, I'm just going to take the higher road and I'm going to let y'all know he's fit to play. I, this to me was just hilarious. <laughs> I'm not mad at it. But it was just an unnecessary tweet from Carl Anthony Towns that I was like, my guy. But nonetheless, we're going to move on to what I call my favorite courtside Karen. Apparently, courtside Karen is becoming a thing now, and she's traveled across the pond all the way to Australia. And I would love to show you this entire clip because it is hilarious. If you have a chance, go find it. Because there's a moment, the clip is in Spanish, the, the commentators are in Spanish, and all of a sudden they're saying, blah, 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 blah. What is going on? Like they <laughs> just get so annoyed. And then you hear this guy in, in the stadium, he's like, you are delaying the entire game because she wants to um, flash ra or flip Rafael the bird. So take a look at this. Señora. No sé quién es, si es un señor o una señora, pero... Thanks, You're delaying everything. Claro, estáis retrasando todo. Es decir, estáis tocando las narices. ¿Quién está saboneando el partido? No sé. Rafa se ríe, pero es un momento... Luego le está pidiendo matrimonio a Rafa o no sé. Oh. No, hombre, no. No, pero que no. So confused. Number one, he was like, are you talking to me? <laughs> right. <laughs> like, he, he, she's talking to me. He just laughed at the whole thing. But I'm like, why do we stop the match? Because this lady is flipping him the bird. It makes absolutely no sense to me. I don't watch a ton of tennis, but I, I from what I know, Rafael is a completely friendly guy. And then I just love his reaction. Twitter had his reaction where he just smiled at the whole thing. And he, me? You mean me? And then has her flipping him off. I, why? <laughs> Britt, you have an answer? You, you think that this, uh, this is a definitely like they've been hooking up and now he just forgot about her kind of thing? Yeah, like she, she like, uh, uh, I see you, boo. And then it's just hilarious because I do watch tennis, not like a ton, but I do watch tennis. And tennis is a very proper sport. That is match was stopped because of it, because that kind of stuff, crowd or not, or stuff with players, that don't happen in tennis, you know? So I think it was like a shocker to everybody that like, cause 
Fans are quiet. You have to be quiet for certain parts of it. It's very much like golf. You have to be quiet. You can get out if something's happening and you're like che cheering or yelling or doing anything like that. So like even flipping somebody off is like hugely disrespectful in like the realm of tennis. So I thought it was hilarious, but like that gotta be some kind of like boo because she was like firm in it too. She, yep, you right. see me, you see, you remember me? Like I felt like it was that kind of energy. <laughs> Yes, that is hilarious. I love the whole crowd going oh, at the same time. That was fantastic. Right, but like that's all I have. Girl. <laughs> Your God, is that the finger? <laughs> yes, it was fantastic. But that's all I got for the post up. Gonna get into what we not gonna do because this one to me is proof that CTE is definitely a thing, and we need to take it more seriously because the nonsense that I'm about to enlighten you on is crazy. So Chiefs fans, I'm sure you remember Larry Johnson. He's a former running back for you guys. You guys might not remember him, I don't know. Um, but we all, you might remember him because it was a while back that we found out he's not a big fan of Colin Kaepernick because in 2019, he posted this tweet and he basically said that, um, well, not this one, but he posted a tweet back in 2019 basically saying that Colin Kaepernick has sold us out um, because he took a deal and he settled. And instead of just basically outing the good old boys of the NF the NFL, which that's fine. This is the one. Yeah, that's the one. He said that. And then he said that Colin Kaepernick should have stuck it to the man and then he should have gone to the AAF League, which is hilarious because that literally lasted all of 10 weeks before it was done. And we knew that that wasn't going to last when, when it started. So I don't know what he thought that Colin Kaepernick was going to do in the AAF League. But this is when we first find out that Larry Johnson has issues with Colin Kaepernick. Um, we still don't know how much they paid Colin Kaepernick because I kind of echoed this sentiment. I was like, bro, you have them on the ropes. The only reason that they're trying to pay you off now is because they don't want this evidence to come out. They don't want these recordings to come out. And I felt like he should have just, you know, stayed the course. So I agreed with this sentiment a little bit. But at the same time, I don't we don't know how much they paid that man. And if that money was enough to set him up and his his family up for the rest of their lives, I I might take that money, too. So. Then we had this young lady that when we saw the Super Bowl, we saw that they were kind of there was there was commercials with Colin Kaepernick in it. The message that Colin Kaepernick was trying to get out was there. It was just a lot for me. I didn't like it. She kind of agrees. She said these NFL commercials capitalizing on the very thing Kaepernick kneeled for ain't doing it for me. Yes, the NFL needs to do more about genuinely showing concern and action regarding social justice and racism. And yes, it still sucks that Kaepernick was treated the way he was back when he, it wasn't a trend. And yes, folks gonna still watch, all things can be true. So Larry Johnson, which I thought that was a very spot on tweet, nothing to see here, keep it moving. But no, nah, Larry Johnson was like, I'm gonna reply to this and say something crazy. And this is this is when I'm like, this, is, this has gotta be CTE because this doesn't make sense otherwise. So um, he, he tweets like Colin Kaepernick, no, that's the next one. The first, the first one he tweets is Colin Kaepernick is capitalizing on the death of every American, African-American victim of police brutality. Endorsements from Ben and Jerry's Ice Cream, Netflix, Nike. Victims' families have to watch arrest. No indictments, no laws, no hope. Who did his kneeling help? And actually, it's helped a lot of people. Number one, um, it brought this conversation to a national stage. And when uh, George Floyd and Ahmaud Arbery happened, now it was just like it kept that momentum. Colin started that momentum and it kept the momentum. So what we're not going to do is pretend that in this country where the immediately consistently portrays black people as vicious monsters who deserve to be murdered by police, that Colin Kaepernick wasn't the catalyst to kind of change that narrative. So yes, his kneeling actually did a lot. Then he posted this next week, Dave, that you can post that up where I was like, okay, I'm going to have to tap out of this. My guy is going through something that doesn't make any sense. Um, and he basically says that taking a knee is a gesture of Masonic allegiance to, I don't know who that is, a prominent figure in the Messianic lore and also by the same name, um, a physician king and a Tyree who worshiped ritualistic murder and religious prostitution. Okay, what? And then his next tweet follows up to that and basically says, the same thing, but then he takes it to a whole nother level. He's like, kneeling runs deeper than messianic ritual. Um, gen flexion is ultimately a sign of sexual submission made to a social custom. Uh, social custom. It, it was first practiced by human tribes conquered in war. Then it was made a general sign 
of respect from slaves to their owners. So he's basically saying that Colin Kaepernick was out here kneeling as respect to his owners, which were the NFL. That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. First of all, we know that Colin Kaepernick didn't actually kneel at first. He was sitting down and then it was ex Green Beret, um, Nate Boyer, who said, hey, don't don't sit. You should kneel because it shows a little bit more sign of respect. And Nate was trying to help his message be more digestible to people who were going to take this this willful ignorance kind of approach to it. So I don't think Nate had any malicious intentions by telling Colin Kaepernick to kneel. Um, and if this kneeling was a sign of submission, it wouldn't have blackballed Colin Kaepernick. Eric Reed still wouldn't be being blackballed. None of those things would have happened. So I think this is a moment in time where the people around him need to look at these conspiracy theories and realize, okay, CTE might really have a hold of my boy and I need to really kind of get him some help. Or Larry, you can do some things too, because I looked you up. You haven't donated a damn thing since you have been out of the league. So maybe get a maybe get a charity like Colin Kaepernick does and give to inmates so they can have less of a chance to become repeat offenders. Do something, but what you're not gonna do is say that my boy is out here kneeling in submission to slave masters. That's not that's not what we're doing. You need to do better. Get some help. But that's all I got for what we're not gonna do. So let me get Devin up here because she gotta get the vocals ready. Because now it's time for Brits Ticks. Brits Ticks. All right, guys, it is time for Brit's take. Um, my take today is going to be very interesting because the media did not cover this. Again, on Brit's take, a lot of times we try to cover stuff that, you know, other people don't want to cover. We did the same thing with the Chad Wheeler situation. And the day we talked about it here on The Fumble, it started making news and stuff like that. I'm not saying The Fumble just likes to start things and, you know, lead the way for um, misinformation, but I'm gonna see if we could do the same thing today with this topic because Patrick Mahomes threw his teammates completely underneath the bus at, in his post Super Bowl interview and nobody mentioned it. We have a video of what he said because I don't want y'all saying that I'm just making it up and this is clickbait and whatever. So let's roll that clip right now. Uh, the receivers were running, were running routes, um, not exactly where I thought they were going to be at. Um, and the offensive line, they did good. They were, they were good at sometimes, and sometimes they 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 let guys through. And uh... what he is literally talking about his own teammates right now in that moment. And he was literally like, yeah, I mean, my receivers, they weren't where I told them to be. I, my offensive line was just letting people through. First of all, my guy, you are the highest, you have the largest contract in NFL history for a reason. And because of that, as a leader of not just your team, but a face of the NFL, when the team wins, it is you that gets all the glory. When your team loses, guess what? That also rests on you. That becomes your problem. That becomes your fault. And that is just what you do as a leader. I've never seen a situation where a guy that we've considered possibly to be a goat, which now we know, and I'm and I'm not running that back. Patrick Mahomes is never going to be a goat to me because he did not take uh, or he did not beat Tom Brady. But when we're talking greats across the board, the Michael Jordans, the LeBron Jameses, the Kobe Bryants, you know, the the um, Tom Brady's, you don't ever see any of these guys blaming. Their teammates for a loss. They say, you know, I should have done this. It was my fault. I didn't lift my team up. I didn't do this, that, and the third, whatever it is. You do not hear them say it was their fault. It was whatever. Even when it was clearly J.R. Smith's fault after the game, LeBron James didn't say, hey, J.R. Smith, it's his fault that we lost the game. Never said that. You do, And that's a clear cut thing that like, hey, J.R., that was your fault, my guy, you know, like, and we never see this moment, but we saw it. And this made me lose so much respect for Patrick Mahomes because a lot of this was his fault. Like we, we talked about that moment where within 10 um, pass attempts, he only had completed three. He went the, he ended the game 26 of 49 
only had 270 yards, had two interceptions, and had a QBR of 49.9, which is actually the second worst in his entire NFL career. Yet you're going to blame your receivers and your offensive line as to why you lost the game. Twitter literally was the one that brought this to my attention because they waited, you know, and I give it to the Twitter trolls because they waited for the media to start talking about this and make a deal of this, but they, the media did not. So the Twitter trolls decided to come through this week and they talked about it. One imagine said, imagine Cam Newton did this in a post game. So we got to shun Patrick Mahomes for a bad post game uh, Super Bowl interview or not? Nah? Because yes, we know that every time Cam Newton has had a situation where he's talked about something or whatever the case is. And when he played in that Super Bowl game, yes, we do remember that moment of his bad post-game interview after they lost in the Super Bowl. And everybody went crazy on that. Nobody has said anything about this Patrick Mahomes situation. Another person uh, took to Twitter as well, and they said, imagine if any other great quarterback said that. Literally, imagine how we would have reamed them and went into them about it. And then this last um, post here said, haha, I hadn't seen this. Throwing his teammates under the bus just so easily. I know Allen would never bad looks pat. Definitely. Like, I cannot believe that, like, Patrick, it, he did it so smooth and so easily. Like, it was nothing. Like, he did not give two rats tells about any one of his teammates to just sit there immediately when he was asked what happened in the game, whatever. Well, my receivers didn't do this. My offensive um, line didn't do this. Like, immediately. I could not. I, I literally, like, this year has been incredibly anti-Patrick Mahomes for me. Every time I've, like, wanted to like the guy, there's been so many opportunities for me to not like him. It all started at the beginning of the season when he was – not trying to be on, you know, um, the coattails and the situation with the racial injustices and stuff and didn't want to say anything. But then he then he pops into the video and does say something. And then his mama is just like very like Trump supporter, like anti like anything Black Lives Matter. And then his girlfriend now her or her fiance now her tweets about like, oh, yes, I, I, I did the quad with black with a black girl. My life's complete. Like, and what are you saying now? Oh, I had a baby by a black man. Life's complete. Like, I don't know, just the idea of wanting to, like, I don't know, imitate or idolize, like, a, the black, like, culture, like, and just pull from it so much. I don't like that energy from her. I think it's weird. Um, and then now this. Ladies, I will get both of you guys back on the screen. Um, what are your thoughts about Patrick Mahomes throwing his teammates underneath the bus? Devin, I will start with you on this one. It's not a good look. Um, I saw this this morning as well, and it's just a surprise. You want to you want to appear as a unit. You want to appear as a team. And for him to be sitting there and saying like these people didn't do it, this guy didn't do it. It's just it's not a good look. It's a team effort and. That's not something that you should be. It's like when James Harden in the press conference was, you know, throwing his teammates under the bus. It's just a bad look. It's not the right way to handle it. And he needs to grow up and learn these kinds of things quickly because uh, I don't think fans are going to be appreciating this kind of attitude throughout his career. Well, not only not yeah, no, fans I... appreciate it, but Jackie, yeah, to, to you, do you yeah. think that, like, he is going to be now in a situation where, yes, we have a break until next season starts, but I don't think his teammates are going to forget this moment. And they are now, because his contract is so large, when it comes up time for their contracts, they're not going to be able to stay or they're going to have to take pay cuts because they can't afford to pay anybody else on the team. So what do you think how his teammates are going to react and how they're going to feel for this upcoming season with what we just heard? Well, they're not going to take a pay cut. I can tell you right there. Half of them who might have been willing to take a pay cut before are looking at this and like, oh, no, if it's all my fault, you're just going to pay me that money now. Like, you take the pay cut, my guy. You're the one making all this ridiculous money. That's number one. And number two, this is the exact opposite of what I've been commending them for. I've been commending them on how yep. they look out for each other, build each other up and really get have each other's back. This is the exact opposite of that. This is him going out there and saying it wasn't he might as well have that Shaggy song. It wasn't me. You know, it was them like, <laughs> no, my guy, we watched 
too. You had some good moments, but you guys failed as a team. You guys did not, this wasn't an individual failure. This was a team failure. And this to me, like you're the guy that I'm supposed to fo follow into battle. You're the guy that if somebody hits you too hard, I'm supposed to be like, oh, don't touch my quarterback like that. Now I'm like, get one more jab in for me since he's saying I'm out here not doing my job. Like he, this is, this right. is bad. Now he's got to win the trust of his teammates again. And that is people, when they, you going out into battle with people, they don't easily forget stuff like this. So, uh, yeah. yeah. And then you got this loud mouth girlfriend too. There's just, there, Patrick is losing on all fronts right now. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I don't know how or what he's going to do to gain the respect back from fans, his teammates, and this could be, I mean, a lot of times we do see guys that get these crazy contracts and it kind of is like the the same um, curse with the lottery. You know, every time people win the lottery, they end up having some crazy curse on them and they lose their money or they die or they like whatever the case. It's like something weird, bizarre with the lottery, you know? And I feel like a lot of times when players get these large contracts like that, like, I don't know if it goes to their head or whatever it is, but they end up not being who we thought they were going to be. And it literally happened immediately to me for Patrick Mahomes because at the beginning of this last season, right after he signed his contract, it was like I started to like him less and less and less. And you can't just like try to pick your guys up or do this or whatever when you're winning. When, you lose, when you're losing, you have to, as the quarterback, as the leader of the team, you have to put everything on your shoulders. And, or, and even if you know it's somebody else's fault, you know, you don't, do that as a leader you just don't do that and so um yeah patrick mahomes has a lot to learn but i almost think it could be too late for his group of guys that he has around him now because either they're not going to take the pay cut or they're going to go to another team and we'll see the this the chiefs unravel very quickly but yeah that's it for brit's take um I had to call out pat mahomes because that was some shady business you did my guy <laughs> all right yeah it was very shady not not a good move pat figure it out um all right well let's wrap up the show you guys subscribe to our channel tap the bell for notifications give this video a thumbs up leave a comment below follow all of us on instagram and twitter and all the other social media platforms wash your hands wear a mask and we'll see you guys at 1 pacific time tomorrow and don't forget about fan or Friday. friday bye everyone Woo!